Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here, and just posting a quick follow-up video to my latest Reason 11 video. And I've had a few people help me out with this. And so what I want to do is show you how you can use Reason as a vocoder. So Matthias from Reason Studios commented on the video and taught me how to do it in Bitwig, and I'm going to show you how to do that in Cubase. And then the other thing is automating parameters in the Reason Rack plugin using Cubase. And at first I realized, yes, there is a simple way to automate things in Reason Rack, and that is just to hit the W button in Cubase and start automating as you would any other parameter. And that will show up in your track in Cubase. And then I had a friend of mine who I just met over YouTube commented on my video and then walked me through over FaceTime how to use the quick controls in Cubase and these knobs that we have on complete control and how to use those to automate parameters in the Reason Rack plugin or any virtual instrument for that matter. So let's start with the vocoder. I've got a track here. I will post a link to the original song. I've got this song that I recorded with a singer, Alice Best, about a year ago. But this is her vocal track right here. I'm releasing the lies. So there's the dry vocal. And so what we need to do is put the Reason Rack plugin as an insert on our audio track in Cubase. So I've got my vocal track right here. I hit the E button and up pops the inserts. And right there, I put a Reason Rack plugin effect on the first slot. So you would see something like this. You go to Other and choose the Reason Rack plugin. Then once I did that, I loaded up an instrument. So I've got the Europa synthesizer running inside my Reason Rack, and then underneath that I put a vocoder. And now the routing definitely matters on the back. And so what we need to do is turn the rack around by pressing Flip Rack, and you can see the routing that I've done on this one here. It looks kind of complex, but this is how it works. Something I didn't even notice when I was first looking at Reason in that first day is this audio in from host. And this is new for the Rack plugin. We've got audio in from host, so I can take audio from Cubase and route it into some source. And so in this case, what I did is I routed it into the vocoder as the modulator. And the way a vocoder works is you've got a modulator and a carrier, and it'll take the modulator signal, in this case the vocals, and it will run it through the carrier, which is the synthesizer. So we need to have those two things kind of merging together in this vocoder instrument. Main out goes to the modulator input. This is now my vocal track that's going to go to the modulator. And then I take the carrier input from the Europa synthesizer. So I'd go left and right out from that. And then I take the output of the vocoder and I run it to the main outputs on this one rack effect. Now what I need to do in Cubase is make a MIDI track. And I make sure that this MIDI track is running out to my vocal track's first insert slot. So this MIDI track is now sending MIDI information to this Reason Rack effect on my vocals as an, that's being used as an insert. Now this MIDI information goes to whatever's on that first insert. In this case, it is the Europa synth. And then the audio, the vocal track, is being processed by the vocoder. And don't forget with the vocoder, if you have no MIDI running, in other words, there's nothing here, you won't hear anything. The only time you'll start hearing something, let's say this was not here at all, is if you have keys playing. So now I press some keys down. And now we get the vocoder effect. So that's the way this vocoder is working for me in Cubase. Let's unmute this and just listen to that again. So I've got my MIDI notes right here. So that vocoder is working perfectly. I can go to my vocoder effect, hit the E button right here. So we can see with these band controls here, we get more realistic sounding vocals or less realistic sounding if we go all the way down to four band. Sure. 
And then the cool thing about it is you can do things like this, press this hold button. And it sort of keeps, almost like it keeps the last word that the person said. So there's some fun things you can do with that. You can play with this shift knob. You can control some of the um, high frequencies. So if things are sounding a little dark, you can boost the high frequencies right here. And then the shift, I think that probably plays with the format controls. So let's have a listen to that. So that's like playing with the uh, harmonic content of of what's running through the vocoder. So there's all sorts of fun things we can do, and it's a very simple vocoder, but it just sounds really good. It works really well, and I loved working with it in the past, but I've never, up till this point, been able to run things through it, through Cubase, like I can here. So that's what I'm really excited about. Let's see what else we could do, and that was controlling automation of parameters. Let's make a new instrument here. I'm gonna load up a Scenic. So the simplest way to automate anything in the Reason Rack plugin would be just using your DAW's regular automation uh, functionality. So in Cubase, what we would do, let's call this track Scenic Pad. So the next thing we need to do is just find some parameter that we want to automate and just start automating it. But of course, with Cubase, all we need to do to write automation is click this little W right here. Make sure the R is on to read automation after you've written it. So the W is write automation. So if that is on, and now of course when we play something, it will get written in. So let me just record some notes here. Okay, so now that I've got something recorded, let's try automating something with this, this thing. So all we need to do is start grabbing your parameter that you want to automate. So here we go. Let's go a little bit earlier with the W on. Of course with Cubase, all you need to do now is go over to the bottom left corner of the track, mouse over it, and you'll see the little show automation lane. And what we can do is we don't want to look at volume, we want to look at these strange parameters we just automated. And so all we have to do is click where it says volume right there, and you'll see the first two things that pop up are the two parameters that I just automated. So I can see both of them, they've got a little star beside them showing me that there's automation. And now what we've got is some automation that happens right here on this macro control. And then I can show the other lane if I want to. I can show one more lane and we can see the other parameter that I just automated. So I could now go in here. And I could do whatever I want with that automation. So I could make this automation happen exactly on the beat. You know, get rid of this point right here just by clicking it and deleting it. And then of course, if we watch our scenic, we'll see it all changing. Why didn't I think of that? I don't know. Very simple to go in and automate any single parameter in Reason Rack as a plugin. So, yeah. Another thing that my friend Nico taught me, you can use complete control to control any parameter in Reason. And then we can use Cubase quick controls to make these little quick control maps that could control any of these parameters in Reason as well. And so having the two of them work in conjunction, you could actually make yourself some really beautiful little templates that would work for your favorite virtual instruments or your favorite instruments in the Reason Rack plugin. So let's see how we could do that. So click on, the, on your track, go to the bottom of the inspector and click on Quick Controls, and you'll see a bunch of things pop up. Some of these are going to be default things. They're going to change once you put in your own Quick Controls. But what you need to do next is go up to where it says Studio and then go to Studio Setup. And then in here, you're going to click on Track Quick Controls over on the left-hand side. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure our MIDI input is set to Complete Control Port 1 and for the input and output. That's really important. Go to where we've got these eight different quick controls and we need to teach 
Cubase to respond to each one of these knobs. And in order to do that, make sure you are on page one of your template in Complete Control. And this is the default template one. And what we need to do is then click on the controller. And what we need to do is hit the Learn button. So you press the Learn button and you start turning the knob and it will learn which control you're using. You'll see right now, I already have this set to 14, 15, 16, all the way up to 21. You'll see that because I just moved control, um, the second control knob, it just remapped it to the second knob. I wanna go back to the first knob, so I'll go back to the first one, and I make sure that control change 14 is showing up on this first quick control. And then I go on and I can do all the rest of them. So you can arrow down, move the second knob, arrow down, move the third knob, arrow down, move the fourth knob, and so on until you get 14 through 21 to match up with control change 14 through 21 on this first page of your template. After we're done that, we can then hit apply and then hit OK. And by the way, if this doesn't work for you the first time you try it, which it didn't for me, Nico also advised me to hit apply and OK, or just to hit OK, and then reopen Studio Setup and go back to Track Quick Controls, then hit Learn, and then see if the knob is actually responding. Now, once I did that, it started to work for me. I don't know why that ha is that way, but you do that with each of these eight knobs. You hit OK. So now we've got our virtual instrument back up, and I'm going to click on the Quick Controls over here. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take off automation for now, because I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to collapse this just so it's less confusing. And I'm going to hit this little Quick Control Learn Mode button. So you click the L button, and then you click on whichever parameter you want to learn. So right now, I want to teach this to respond to those macros in Scenic. So I go back over to the front page, and I click the Edit button there, and I see my first macro, this blue one. And I'm going to just grab that and move it. So this is now macro one that is being learned by the quick controls. I can then click on the next one. Make sure you turn this off after you've done this so you don't accidentally learn of several parameters. But I now click this next one, make sure it's got a box around it, grab this slider, move it, and then I go into the next one, grab this slider, move it, and don't worry about what these said before. Some of them will say like pitch bend and stuff like that. Your pitch bend will still work if you remap these quick controls. So you start right from the first one. I'm going to do a couple more. Let's go over here and we'll go to the filter section uh, because it might be fun to be able to control the filter. So we'll do the fourth control will be uh, frequency. So I just grab this and move that. And then let's also do another one for volume. So I'm going to do the fifth one is going to be volume. And I'm just going to move that so we can now control volume very easily on Scenic. So we've got a bunch of controls in here. I think that's probably enough for now. You could add whatever one, other ones you want in there. But let's see if those work. Let's turn off the Learn button and let's grab this knob. And you can see now that as I move this knob, it's moving Macro 1 in Scenic. This is moving Macro 2. This is moving Macro 3. This next one is controlling the frequency. So if I click back over here, I can see my frequency is being controlled. Which is perfect. And then now let's go to this control, which is doing the overall volume. And now the cool thing is you could go over to complete control. So I'm going to load up the complete control software itself, even while Cubase is running. And I'm going to click this little MIDI symbol right next to the Native Instruments logo. So I click that little button, and this is where we can go in and change the templates that are popping up in Complete Control. So what I'm going to do, I've got one little template that I made when Nico was first teaching me, and then I'm going to click this plus button and make a new template. I'm going to call this Scenic. So I type Scenic right here, and this is going to be my complete control template for Scenic. So I've got Scenic running right there. I can see control change 14. I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to change this to macro 1. Change this to macro 2, macro 3. Then what did I have next? 
filter frequency. And then I had volume, so we'll call this volume. I close, complete control, I come back over here, and now on my complete control keyboard, I can cycle up through the different templates that I have on here. So I'm gonna to go to Scenic. And now that I've got Scenic, look at this. I get names, macro one, two, three, filter frequency, volume, balance. So let's now look over here. Let's turn off the W and the R buttons, and let's just play around with this a little bit and see what happens. Filter frequency. Volume. So this really lets you use complete control to great effect, to be able to see the names of your parameters if you just save it as a simple preset. Don't forget to also make a preset for your quick controls in Cubase. So come over to the inspector and click on this little tiny box right here, and then go save preset. We're gonna call this Scenic. And then from now on, whenever you go over to your Quick Controls, if you make a new Scenic track, all you have to do is go over to your Quick Controls, and then from the drop-down menu, choose Scenic. And you'll see this list over here change. There we go. And now we've got all of our macros ready to go on our new Scenic track. So anyways, that really clears up a lot of information for me. I love being able to use complete control to a little bit better effect, being able to see the names of parameters, saving it as a simple preset. Using these quick controls in Cubase is just going to be a huge time saver and allow you to control things with your hardware much easier. You could use that with any virtual instrument or parameter. So click on the subscribe button and the bell and stay tuned. I'm going to be posting lots of videos about all sorts of things related to music production. And thanks for watching.